there. Hey there, folks. It is Rob from Rob's Nightmares, and we got Kenny. Hey, everyone. I'm, I I like going by Kenny. My channel is Mr. Car Productions, K-A-R, and I like doing educational and inf informational uh, videos or entertaining. I... You, used to do public speaking a lot when I was a lot younger and um, I've done movie reviews I talk I like talking about different experiences I that I've had in my life so that's basically it hey we got uh Matthias Juarez I think hey how's it going um well I'll put your uh Kenny I will put your link in the uh in the description so go check kenny out um what you know we're making this you want me, you uh, want me to do that here yeah well i mean it's up to you uh you know i can do it when the video is over i can edit your uh you plug in your youtube channel but uh so yeah guys every weekend uh i'm gonna be doing a rob's horror hangout stream where we basically talk about movies, horror movies, and uh, uh, go over a certain topic. And today's topic is your very first horror movie that you ever watched and how did it affect you? It um, Every single weekend, we're going to go over a topic. And I'm, I don't really keep my streams long. I, I, you know, hour, hour and a half, maybe even two at the most is fine. But uh, yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing, and I was just, you know, I'm tr I'm trying to get back into streaming again. I haven't really done it myself for, I don't know, it's been it's been a long time. Um, but yeah, I am part of the Movie Busters with me, Alex, and Thomas and Dan. Um, we hardly ever do shows that much anymore, so I kind of wanted to branch off and do something for myself. Um, so I thought this was this would be pretty cool. So yeah, I got Kenny here. Uh, Kenny and I have known each other since uh, 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. We are kind of the OGs of YouTube. We um, were doing movie reviews and stuff like that when everyone else was, uh, you know, getting their butts wiped by baby wipes and you know, uh, milk bottles and all that stuff. In other words, we're older, so, mm. um, so yeah, uh, that's you know, it's really cool to have him on here. Um, again, his channel is Mr. Car Productions. I'll put that in the description when we, when this you know video goes up on uh, YouTube, there, and I can edit it. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, this is the topic. Uh, your very first horror movie you ever watched? Uh, Matthias Suarez said the first horror film. I believe I saw was it 2000. Oh, wow. It 2000. And, yeah. The recent one. Yeah. Well, the, Hey, you know what? That's actually a good film to start with because I, I don't know. I like that movie. Do you like that movie, Kenny? Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. And I like chapter two, but it felt too, like too much was going on in it. <laughs> I felt like the story kind of got lost, but I like that first one. Yeah, I, I I'm more of the Tim Curry the 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 TV cut uh, mm. version of it. Um, I like that I think more, but the 2017 one kind of uh, it kind of blew me away with some of the stuff they showed, like when he actually bit his arm off and mm. uh, you know jo Georgie's arm off and stuff like that. I was like, wow, I can't believe they actually did that. Yeah, how he um, opened his mouth. Wow. Yeah, he, yeah, he's, he, he, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right about chapter two. Chapter two was, eh, it was a little bit of a mess, but whatever. Um, so do you want to go first on uh, your, uh, you know, the first sure. horror movie you ever saw? Yeah. Do you remember what? Do you remember what age you were? Mm, I may have been three or four. Oh, wow. Because I started watching visual media uh, 
long time ago, and it was really to help me educate educate me and also for me to be verbal because I was not a very talkative person. Mm-hmm. So I think the first one I ever saw may have been Poltergeist. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poltergeist, yes. And yeah, I was saying it wasn't it didn't really say scare me but it was like i was watching different uh kind of visual uh media first i was watching um visual flashcards by learning math mm-hmm. and so and, um poltergeist was you'd like another way for me to learn about uh, uh, different things and uh, it helped me understand uh, filmmaking because uh, that was something I was always interested in at a very early age. Well, Poltergeist is a good one. That's uh... a... <laughs> uh, you know that TV in that movie? Mm-hmm. My my parents had that exact... It was almost exact same. Like, you know, the ones that kind of sit... You know, the big ones that kind of sit on the floor yeah, you, know, you, you didn't. You didn't need a TV. Uh, what do you call that? Like an You didn't need an entertainment center or stand. It just sits. And uh, my, you know, when the fuzzy, what do they call that? The snow, the fuzzy, the snow on the screen. When that would happen, mm-hmm. it's like I'd always think of. Uh, I'd always think of Poltergeist in that way. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, putting your hand up, and looking back, saying they're here. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised but, that when she did that, she didn't feel that uh, static thing that, like we used yeah. to. Yeah, it, it probably it, pro- it probably was on, but it probably where they um, didn't have that where she wouldn't feel that. So, so I, her. Well, I, I'm curious. You you said that so when you first saw Poltergeist, that was your first film, your first horror film you ever saw. Yeah. Did it? You said you just said that it really didn't scare you. But what about when you watch it now? Like, do, do you have any like different feelings about it? Like, I still really think of not necessarily scary, but I'm more fascinated and amazed by it. How they were able to do their the uh, visual effects now, like as they yeah that they were able to do back then, like that white. Um, creature whatever coming out i think it was coming out of the closet mm-hmm. that and i think it was a mom in the room and it was trying to get at her i think i'm thinking of it right and then there was that creature that came out of the middle of, of the house so now uh, that was really what it, it still it really fascinates me more than anything about how they're able to do all of that and then and the acting is probably some of the best from that era to see now. Matthew says, uh, I was 12 when I saw it, and it knocked the pants off of me and stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, when you, when you see, when you see hor- a horror film, yeah. when, you're, when you're young, it's like, you know, some people say, like, you shouldn't show kids or sh- you shouldn't show people who are, or, you know, kids who are younger, you shouldn't show them horror films because it might give them nightmares. It might this and that. Honestly, I was really young and it didn't bother me. Maybe everyone's different, but it didn't bother me to where I was like, Oh my God, like I, I cannot watch another horror film. I'm never going to sleep. I'm going to have nightmares all the time. Honestly, it just affected me differently it, it, to me. Horror was like a, it, it, it was like an art form. You know, it's like drawing. It's like you, you draw like a really cool picture. Like for me, horror was an art form. Seeing all these different kinds of killers and, and like these characters, you know, Jason, Freddy, Michael. And it, I, don't, I think I just appreciate it for just what it is. I mean, the same way I appreciate action films. It's, it's, you know. Uh, but I think when you're younger, you just, you get that, like, uh, 
just that feeling of, okay, what am I watching here? It doesn't have to be gory. It could just be sc- even scary. Like <laughs> I, I try to think of like, like a scary one that I saw back then um, that really kind of affected me. Oh, okay. The witches, like the witches is not considered a horror film, even though I, <laughs> there are some horror elements in there about which, you know, these old ladies trying to get these kids, kidnap them and kill them, turn them into mice and stomp on them and all this stuff. Um, I just, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, you would never be able to do that today with all the stuff going on in the world. Um, but, you know, if you compare that to the new remake, which is with Anne Hathaway, it's nothing like the original. The original is way more disturbing. Um, but, uh, to me, that just feels like a horror film because of what goes on in that in that film. Imagine seeing that at a young age. Uh, it really just affected me. Um, it made me want to, you know, if I walk down the street and I see this old lady looking at me, I'm like, oh, crap. You know, oh, crap. What's she going to do? You know, does she have purple eyes? Is she going to kidnap me? Is she going to turn me into a mouse? I don't know. That's the young kid talking in me. So, uh I don't know. I just think it affects people differently. Um, but I just, I don't agree with like, you know, people say, well, you shouldn't show younger kids horror films. I just think if you're going to show them something, show them something that's not going to have a lot of gore, a lot of maybe a lot of violence, just something maybe scary. Like I think Poltergeist is actually, I mean, I don't know. I think that's a good one. Um, like you said. Um, is there anything else about Poltergeist that you well, uh, I know is there, uh, any, is there anything is there anything that bothered you about Pol- yeah, Poltergeist in general? Like mm, like anything that stands out, like maybe something that you can't stop thinking about. I don't maybe know, maybe the T maybe that T V element. Did, did anything give you nightmares? Maybe did anything seen... anything give you nightmares about it? Not that I think of. No. Yeah. yeah. Freaky, but not really give me nightmares. And um, I think that that was probably the first time I saw Craig T. Nelson, and yeah, uh, he was in the show Coach, Coach yeah. years yeah. later. And did you, uh, you used to watch Coach at all? Yeah, so that was a great one. Have his yeah. uh, bumbling, not really bumbling, but his, um, I guess, assistant coach, that tall, blonde yeah, guy. he, they, yeah, that guy was in uh, the stand. Stephen King's the stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then they had this other um, older man. Oh, there was three of them. Can't remember his name. I think he passed away not too long ago. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great show too. Yeah, and it's one of those shows that no one ever really talks about, honestly. No, <laughs> right. Uh, but like Poltergeist, I really liked all the pe- the work that was put into it. I, I think that was that. I think that, I think that was the one that. Was it Toby, Toby Hooper that director was going to be working working on that or something? And then it was there was a big uh, back and forth because of it between him and Steven. And then it turned then Spielberg became the main director. I think it was that. I think it was Poltergeist. And it t- then. They, well, they 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 did not enjoy really working together be because of that. Well, I tell you, Poltergeist, like like I said before, like well, looking at one of those old school TVs, mm-hmm. never like when I look at a new TV, like like a flat screen, I just I don't feel that you, you don't really feel that. It's yeah. like with those old TVs. It's like after watching that movie. Um, that's all I think about is, you know. Yeah, because now TVs uh, don't do that. And those old school TVs were so heavy. My mm. God, 
I, I remember my dad had to get like four, four of his neighbors to come over and try to get that thing in the house. I mean, it was, I don't know. It was like 30, it was like 36 inch. I don't know. Somewhere yeah. on there, but it just sat on the floor. If you tried to even clean behind it, you can't, you can't do nothing. It's, I don't know. I'm right. glad TVs are much lighter now, but mm -hmm. <laughs> a physical media collector. Well, sometimes they could, depending on the size, it could take more than one person to yeah. carry it. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So your, your uh, very first horror film that you saw was uh, Poltergeist. So yes, mm -hmm. that, that is a good one. Um, I'm going to tell you what my, uh, very first horror film was and that is um jaws and let me tell you uh this film scarred me and I, I wouldn't say it gave me nightmares it just uh if i walk up to an ocean uh if i can't see what i'm stepping on there's no way I'm done. I'm, I'll, I'll just stand there. I'll stand there at the beach and just look at the ocean. I'm not going to go in it. Now, if I can see what I'm stepping on, okay, I'll go. But it's the same as like Lake Michigan. Like Lake Michigan, I it's fresh water. I know there's not going to be any sharks in there, but if I still can't see what I'm stepping on. So in my mind, I'm like, you know, uh, is there going to be something that I can't see that's big? It's going to bite me? I don't know. It's just, a, it's a fear like in my head but it's because of this movie it's because of this it ain't because of anything else um you know the very first scene of this is when the girl goes out in the dark you know they've both been drinking the boy the, the the boyfriend's on the beach and he's like uh he's trying to take his clothes off and he's being an idiot she goes out there butt naked and she it's dark and she can't see anything and she's going swimming i'm thinking to myself number one you're stupid going out there in the dark like that and number two, no, no way in hell that, that like, I don't even go out there in the daytime. I'm not going to go out there at night. When but, uh, beaches, they wouldn't really allow people to be out that late, wouldn't they? Right. That's out. Uh, you, usually like, yeah, like beaches don't, I think they have like a sign that says when you're supposed to be out there, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but look, like, this didn't this movie really didn't scare me it just kind of like scarred me it, it it basically it made me not want to go in the ocean it made me more interested in sharks actually i wanted to be i wanted to know what all kinds of shark species that were out there um you know it was really fascinating to me but honestly you know my dad recorded this on a blank vhs tape all it was a tv cut so all the all the the gory scenes you know the leg falling the the quint getting bit um the the kid on the raft with all the blood squirting up and stuff like that it didn't show any of that um but you i knew you know i knew it was happening um but the thing is like i didn't need to see all that to really see what was going on when the kid was getting drug under and the, and the girl in the beginning, like I said, in the, in the dark, when she gets taken under the water, you can't see the shark, but you know, it's there. You can't see it. Um, again, mind games, but look, <sighs> yeah. Seeing this <laughs> jaws is a classic. It's probably one of the best horror movies ever made. And seeing that at a very, very young age, it um it made me more interested in these kind of films it didn't give me nightmares it just scarred me as far as going out in the ocean but it's really what got me into different kinds of genres of horror you know there's slashers there's there's a uh, demon possession there's uh haunted houses there's all different kinds creature features which is kind of like what this is mm -hmm. but it really got me into loving all genres of horror so that i do have to think well i have to thank this movie for getting me into horror but also not wanting to go swimming out in the ocean when my fr if i have friends who are like hey let's go i'm like nope let's go i'll stand right here like a little and you said stand. that in that same recorded tape it had jaws two and three Oh, yes. Uh, so my dad, like I said, recorded these off of television. We didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have enough money to go get 
go buy movies. Um, when I did, I had a paper out, so I went to Suncoast Video. Do you remember that store? Suncoast mm, Video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I love that. I went there and bought a VHS tape and so on. But my dad would record. He'd hook up his his camcorder VCR thing to the TV. So when the te- when the show came on the TV, he would record it off there. Of course, we had commercials and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how he saved money, basically. We, you just record them for free off the TV. And so, yeah, on one blank VHS tape, depending on how long the movie is, you can fit up to about two or three movies. So he had Jaws 1, Jaws 2, and Jaws 3 on one VHS or uh, one blank VHS tape. Uh, so, good, thing, good thing it didn't have four. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that deserves its own VHS tape, Kenny. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Part exactly. four deserves its own. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Matthias says, not a horror film, but Caroline scared me. To Coraline, death. yeah. Coraline, okay. Uh, it's been a, Coraline, is that the, that's the animated one, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. It's, the, it's been uh, a that girl who yes. uh, okay. it with her mom, and then she goes into the into zone in their uh, imaginative world. Right. Okay. It's been oh, God. It's been so. I I need to revisit that one. And then there was um, one part I think where they, uh, not her, but everyone else. I think has buttons for eyes. Oh, God. Some of these, I I have to revisit some of these. Um, but um, yeah, and so you know, this movie just it it affected me in that way. And oh, God, I was let's see, how old was I? I was really young. I saw Cliffhanger in the movie theater, and I was yeah. really young seeing that. Right. Um, which is not a horror film, but I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Um. One, I was really. I was. Could, what's that? One scene probably could be at the beginning. Oh, when the lady falls to her death. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. I, I can't say that didn't affect me, but yeah, it did. Um. But I, I was really young. Uh, God, it. I, I don't. You know, my mom. She's the type that she'll watch some horror films depending on what it is. Um, but she always encouraged me. She always encouraged me. She's like, I don't want you watching this type of stuff. But my dad, he'd be like, Hey, he's like, as long as you, uh, know that it's fake, it's not real. He's like, do you understand that? And I'd say, yeah. And, and he's no like, nightmares. Okay. Right. If I had a nightmare, it was mostly about probably Michael Myers more than anything. Um, <laughs> my cousin, Dan, he always, uh, had, I think dreams about Freddy. I never had dreams about Freddy, but um, which is odd if you think about it. You should have dreams about Freddy if he's about invading your nightmares. But yeah, uh, there's something stalkerish about Michael Myers just standing there. You know, that's that's mm. to me more creepy. Um, mm. But yeah, so <sighs> that's basically like the topic at hand here is your very first horror film and how did it affect you? Um, those of you in the chat, uh, you know, I think Matthias already said his, but if you guys want to list like your very first horror film you ever saw and how did it affect you, um, you know, feel free to. That's what we're talking about today is like what really got us into into horror? Like what made us horror fans? I mean, I guess that's kind of different. What made you a horror fan versus your very first horror film? It's not like. Yeah. To some people, it's not like if you watch your first horror film, then that automatically made you a horror fan. It's like it maybe it takes a couple more to make you kind of, okay, I love the genre. But uh, I don't know. Just for me, it's like Jaws did it. It it did it. I I was like, I love these type of films. Um, You still like that now where you can't uh, uh, stay in the ocean? Let let me tell you. uh, I think it was last... Yeah, it was last year. We went to, um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the Gulf of Mexico at all. Like with the, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, especially from the uh, oil spill. Oh, right. Um, so we, we went to the Gulf of Mexico and we were, 
I forgot which beach it was. It was it was a really nice beach. And we went into the water. And of course, the Gulf of Mexico is pretty clear. I mean, it's when mm -hmm. you go into that part of the ocean, you can actually see what you're stepping on. Mm -hmm. um, where we were, it was I think it was called Clearwater, which is down by down in Florida there. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I felt like I was in the Bahamas. I, I, I was looking at the water. It was clear blue. I saw the sand. I saw everything. So I went out pretty far. Me and the kids, me and my boys went out and we're sitting there and the waves are coming up. And I'm just like, I still, I still kind of felt, I still kind of felt uneasy, but I was looking around. There's a whole bunch of people. I, I wasn't out there by myself. And so I'm like, okay. And uh, so Logan and I are sitting there. We're kind of going up with the waves. And I saw these three fish just swim by us. They're like, they're, they're pretty good size. You know, mm -hmm. they just swam right in front of us. And I'm like, that could have been a shark, <laughs> but you know, it, you know, it just, it, like, again, it's playing with your mind in my mind. I'm just thinking of this. And that's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm yeah, thinking yeah. of. So that's how it affected me. And still to this day, yes, it does affect me that way. And like I said, even if I'm going in fresh, fresh water, a fresh body of water and I can't see nothing. I'm still thinking in my mind, okay, there's a shark in here, but no, they don't live in fresh water. So and here's uh, physical media. He says, are you afraid of the dark? That TV series? <laughs> Not a movie, but yeah, that one is another one that can be. Oh yes. Um, well, they did, they did, they did make a movie, I think, didn't they? Uh, are you afraid of the dark? I think they did make a movie on that, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not like, like that, but I think there was, yes. Yes. That's a good one. But again, like, you know, we're all probably going to have different answers depending on the, you know, what area you grew up in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an eighties kid. So there were a lot of great classic 80, you know, uh, 80s films um you know while growing up in the 80s it just it's uh it was a good era but um i know you know if you would ask this question to my dad what was the very first horror film you ever saw and what how did it affect you he would say the exorcist and <laughs> the exorcist right yeah till the, till this day he um when he <laughs> if you speak about the exorcist he goes He's like, I don't want to see anybody's head turning all the way around because that that scene bothers him. It, mm -hmm. Out of all the scenes in that movie, you know, where she pukes and, and goes down the steps and, you know, out of all the scenes, it's the head spinning. That's really what I he's think. Talking yeah, about. I think the reason is because that's probably more abnormal than anything else that happens in that. Yeah. Even yes. with the creatures and the throwing up. Right, right. Because we, our heads don't do that. Yes. Um. I, uh, I was thinking of uh, more topics to come up with when we do these. Um, I was thinking like maybe one of the topic is like a horror movie that scared you to death, or one of the scariest horror films of all time. You know, those would be some good topics. But uh, um. Yeah, with these streams, guys, I'm, we're just trying to keep it simple. We're not trying to like overdo it and go too long and stuff like that. We just want to uh, basically, you know, just talk about horror because, you know, we're lovers of horror. And I have always been a lover of horror, like I said, since I was young. So um, I don't know. I think there's just so much potential with horror. There's so many subgenres to it. And, um, it's definitely an art form. That's for sure. I was thinking of um, what lies beneath. The one thing that probably start uh, got me, maybe uh, not necessarily scared, but kind of startled me was out of everything else. I think it was when they would close the door. They know they closed it. Then when they walk through again, the door is open. For some reason, that started the crap out of me. <laughs> Are you talking about when she goes to open the door and it's already open, or no? When they close it, walk away. And then when they 
walk back, the door is suddenly open. Oh, right. Okay. For some reason, that, out of everything I was that scared, that started well, that's, the heck out of me. But listen, that's a, that is a, what do you call it? Uh, 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 a typical horror cliche. That's, right, yeah. you know, with doors opening and closing, that's what happens in horror films. But again, yeah, it's just something that always, uh, at that time, I had, oh, that was something that always started me. <laughs> like, <laughs> there, we, there, there we go. Physical Media Collector says, when I was 12, I saw It from the 90s. And that was the first yeah. movie to give me. Mm-hmm. You're not alone. You're not alone in that. A lot of people don't like clowns. So, <laughs> you know, but that movie, especially the one from the 90s, affected a lot of people. And I think it was because of Tim Curry's performance, because his performance was legendary. I mean, it yeah. was nothing against uh, what's his name? Bill Skarsgård. He had a lot of, you know, he had shoes to fill. But Tim Curry, he did that role so well that he just he's just freaky. Like one of the freakiest scenes, I think, and he's not even in the clown makeup. It's when he's walking down the steps and he's like. He calls Stan into the building. He's like, Stan, Stan. And then Stan goes in there. The door locks. And then all of a sudden you see it coming down the steps really Mm -hmm. slow. And I did a, I did a spoof of that in my Rob's uh, short film that I did. Pennywise returns when I'm Mm -hmm. walking down the steps, you know, I did, I did that. I kind of mimicked the same thing, Mm -hmm. but when he's coming down the steps, that was one of the freakiest parts, I think. And that's not even, like I said, he's not even in the full clown getup, but he didn't need to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it wasn't really meant that was probably not meant to necessarily be scary, but it came across like that. I, that's one of the, I tell you that, I think that was on the second part. That was one of the scariest scenes uh, in my opinion on, on that, TV miniseries. Um, but even you know, speaking of Tim Curry, look at what he did in the movie Legend when he was the mm-hmm. Prince of Dark or the, the yeah, what, what is the, the, the Lord of Darkness? Mm-hmm. That, that makeup, he looked like a giant devil. He looked, mm-hmm. oh my God. Yeah, big crazy. Horns. Yeah, the big horns and like he was all red and he had like sharp teeth and man, that guy, Tim Curry, man. And a lot of people don't really think or remember that Tom Cruise also is in that. Yes. And then, um, and then that uh, kind of a, a what is that? John Hughes actress uh, Mia Sarah was in it. Mm-hmm. Yes. She was the girl. Yep. Yep. Young actors in that one. Mm-hmm. Landon. You give me my power cord for the lap. It's on the other side. Um. So yes, you know what? Um, these movies are. Just, it's so fun talking about these. Like, I, I'm just really interested to hear what um, people's first picks are. Like, as far as like the first horror film they ever saw, because you know, if you're a horror fan in the horror community, um, obviously everyone's had their start. Right. They've all had their start. They've all had their first film. So I'm just really curious on what that is. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not even sure. I know Dan couldn't make it to the stream, but I'm not really sure what his first film is as far as horror goes. I want to say it's one of the Friday the 13th films, but I could be wrong. I'm the, I'm actually the one who got Dan into horror. So uh he wasn't really into it until I started to show him stuff. So um, I didn't have a problem with clowns until I saw the movie it. I don't have a problem with clowns now. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, honestly, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think I've really had a problem with clowns. I mean, there's killer clowns from outer space. There's, you know, there's different movies with, with clowns, but like, I never, I never really was afraid of clowns. It's just Tim Curry's performance as Pennywise was, you know, I think that was, that, that said it all, you know? Right. <laughs> and so, it's um, also not many people probably think of it. They're not 
a whole lot of horror films or that do feature clowns. I mean, there I know there are, but with how big the that genre is, there isn't that many. Um, as is like many people <laughs> can't stand them; they're too scared of them. There are a lot of clown horror movies, but they're the low budget independent horror films that no one really knows about. And the mainstream ones, no, there's not really that many mainstream ones. Uh, I support independent horror. I like low budget independent horror films. Um, I think a lot of them have potential. A lot of them are crappy, but that's because if they're low budget, they don't, you know, they pick some of the crappiest actors or maybe some of the actors and actresses are just starting out. So they're not good or they're not as good. But still, you, you got to start someplace. So I feel like there's a charm with those films. I support them. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of clown movies, or sorry, clown horror films out there that are low budget independent. Uh, that no one even. I have how many in my collection? I probably have like 25, maybe 35 horror films that have to do with clowns that no one even talks about. Right. And yeah. amusement. Right. Amusement. Exactly. So that would actually be a fun video. You know what? You just gave me an idea for a video. Uh, my horror film cl uh, collection that has to do with clowns. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a good video. Show all the movies that I own that have to do with clowns. Yeah, because right now I can say I don't think I have any at this at this point. Well, there's I have that a lot of films, but not really horror never really clown horror films well there's that movie clown you, you, you have you seen that one where the clown suit gets stuck to him he I puts on the cl he puts on the clown suit and the clown he can't get it off because it's coming mm -hmm. to, it's being it's a it's like it's becoming him so he's like turning into like this devil or like demon clown i guess yeah. it's pretty good yeah. pretty pretty good movie Okay, I know a lot of kids had a problem with the episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark called Laughing in the Dark. I never had a problem with that episode. Clown is a good movie. I've only seen it once, though. Yeah. The episode called Laughing in the Dark. Um... I think I've seen that one, but I don't, I really don't remember that one. But when it comes to Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, I've seen, you know, I've probably seen most of the, the popular episodes, but I, I, I definitely don't remember that one. You know what? Now that you've uh, said that, I'm going to have to look that up and, and uh, see if I can watch that. Okay. Um, I'm just curious. Has anybody been affected by Jaws? Anybody watching this? Has anybody been affected by this movie or Poltergeist, the original Poltergeist? Because that was Kenny's pick. Because um, yeah, because uh, I didn't care to see the recent Poltergeist. Oh, the uh, <laughs> yeah, the remake one. That's a, yeah, it did. I've seen I've seen it, but it's been a while. I remember it I just know being... you. I, not, I think in your video where you show movies that you own that you hate, I don't think you show that one. But I know you said something about it. I didn't really hate it. It was just unnecessary, honestly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I still feel like people can get creeped out by the original. If not creeped out, they can still get the hell out of here, fly. Um, they can. <laughs> sorry, about to fly up my nose. Uh, <laughs> Zebo the clown. Oh, I'm oh, guessing... that was okay. So that was in that was in the episode called "Laughing in the Dark." I guess. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember something about that. Mm -hmm. Well, see. Da, 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 da. well, yeah. Another um, another one that I I know I saw really early was that kind of a B movie the stuff. 
<laughs> about that. Uh huh. Yes. The stuff. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is, is uh, actually a hard i think that's actually a hard movie to get on physical media like it's it's really i think it's expensive actually yeah people can get the dvd or blu-ray mm -hmm. oh i remember that though um let's see i'm trying to think of i'm trying to think of one that i saw on television halfway through i remember i, I came home and I think it was Halloween four. Yeah, it was Halloween four because it was where Michael had the shotgun. He took the shotgun from Brady. Brady was hitting him. And Michael took the shotgun like this and went like that and hit Brady in the face. Mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing that for the first time. And then after that, I remember it was probably weeks later. I went to Suncoast video and bought Halloween 4. So <laughs> then I watched it all the way through. Right. I love the movie, the stuff, and the, I have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Oh, I okay. It was still, it was not too difficult to get. Well, I wonder if they, okay, so I wonder what company, is it Scream Factory that released it? I wonder if it's Scream Factory, because if it is, I'm going to have to get it, because I, honestly, maybe it's because I just never, maybe I just forgot I don't know. There's yeah, so many, that's horror, one so that many horror films. I, that one is low budget <laughs> for sure. Well, it's got an interesting. Oh yeah, it's Arrow. Okay, Arrow. Right. I have yeah. quite a few. I have like 16 releases of Arrow, so that's definitely going to be one that I have to get for sure. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as Physical Media Collector 87 says, there, you know, I'm also a collector of physical media. So let's go physical media, support physical media. Yeah, because I got quite a bit too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You got you got a pretty good collection there. And then but, uh, like, when I did my video of my Star Wars home video collection, that was about an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your Star Wars collection is pretty good. Um, for me, it's like... Uh, I collect all the Arrow video stuff. I do Kino Lorber. I do um, Vestron, Scream Factory, of course. Shout, Shout Select, um, Vinegar Syndrome. Just you know all that MVD, MVD Rewind, um, all that. Yeah, I've not been able to uh, try and collect those. I get some. Quite a bit of Screen Factory, but not like the rest of them that you were mentioning. <laughs> not that I didn't want, haven't wanted to. I haven't well, been able to afford it. I know oh, you, it can, yeah. it's. I know that it can be. It's not that expensive, but some can be. Well, let me tell you: if you have a local Salvation Army or a local Goodwill, go to those and 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 look. Like go to go every week because I'm telling you. At least the one I have, every week I go, I come out with a ton of stuff. And every location is different. My location, my Goodwill location, every single Blu-ray, DVD, box set, whatever, is a dollar. It's 99 mm -hmm. cents. So right. you might find something that's sealed. You might find something that's out of print. You might find a Blu-ray that's like a special edition. And you get it for 99 cents. Are you kidding me? That's like one of the best deals I've ever seen you know, you can't get that on eBay. So no. <laughs> honestly, I'm telling you guys out there, if you have a Goodwill, go to your Goodwill. I mean, honestly, you will probably find something more than likely. I am watching the Underworld movies. Which one did I just wa I just watched one not too long ago. Uh, oh, Underworld Evolution. That's the second movie. Mm, yeah, because yeah, there's Underworld and there's Underworld Evolution, then there's Rise of the Lycans, I think, which was not even Kate Beckinsale, it was someone else, mm -hmm. right? Right, yeah. So. Okay. And yeah. then she returned in the third or fourth one. Yeah, I think she returned in the fourth one. And there was like Blood Wars or something, and there's like yeah. I don't I don't know which one was the final one. Is that Blood Wars? I can't remember. I think there's like five films, I think. Mm -hmm. 
I can't say that I dislike really any of them. Even the third movie, I think that was okay. But um, I don't know. I really like Underworld Evolution. I thought that was good. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, the Jaws films. Everyone loves the fourth movie, right? Do you love the fourth movie, Kenny? Be honest. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen it all the way through, but I didn't like that one. I don't blame I've you seen, for not seeing it all the way pieces. through. Pieces. Okay, I was right. Yeah, Blood Wars is the last one. Okay, yes. That's the one that I need. I need Blood Wars. If I get Blood Wars, I have them all. So. And you said uh, <laughs> about Jaws the Revenge. Yes, Jaws yeah, the Revenge is the best one. Jaws movie, right? It is the best. Let's be honest. <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. that'll be a good topic for another uh, stream when we talk about like maybe uh, horror films that maybe we hate or or maybe you know why are some of these horror films so bad or you know we'll come up with something. Right. Jaws, right. Jaws four would be a perfect uh, perfect opportunity for that. Can you believe that the first Jaws is PG? Yeah, PG. PG! Uh, weren't, they, weren't they all PG? Or... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, not really sure. I haven't seen what Jaws 2 is. The 4K is box sets. PG or PG-13. Wait, when you say you have the... Wait, he says he has a 4K box set. Oh, do you... does that mean you have all the movies on 4K and just a box set, or is it just Underworld, the first one? Box set, so it must be... I know Walmart the- Walmart has the Blu-ray box set for all the Underworld films, and I thought about maybe getting that, but maybe not if they have a 4K. If they have a 4K one, I'll probably definitely pick that one up. I just want one with all the movies. I want one with, you know, because I, like I said, I need uh, Blood Wars, so... I like 4K, but I, I don't feel that it's not people don't really like like it or collect it as much as Blu-ray because Blu-ray still has most of the uh, market share of that high definition. Well, the problem is too is 4Ks can be expensive, and with today's economy, either buy groceries with high inflation or. <laughs> You know, spend thirty some dollars for a four K. Not every four K is thirty some dollars. You can find some good deals with four K, yeah. but it's uh, the the market for them. I don't think is as high as let's say. I mean, look, Walmart still has the five dollar DVD bin. Okay, you know the big thing in the middle that you have to dig through, stick your hand down there, and put, you see what's down there. You know, mm-hmm. if they're still selling five dollar DVDs, obviously those are still in the market. It's all them on 4K. Okay. That's awesome. Out of print. Uh Yeah, all of them in 4K. That'd be cool. That's, I need, that's, I'm probably going to get that. I'm going to have to look into getting that because. Hey, something that I know I have that is out of print. I have that Transformers Matrix of Leadership big uh, set box thing. Where it opens at front at the sides. I'll find it. It's it's got to be on eBay. I mean, obviously it will be, but I don't know. Oh, you I, mean I don't that know how much it's gonna be. Yeah, if it's out of print, then eh, it's probably gonna cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah. But oh well. Yeah, quite a. There's probably quite a few I have that is out of print. Like um, the, uh, the Tommy Knockers. Oh, do you? Is that the DVD? Yeah. Yes, I have that one too. It's the double yeah, sided disc, right? Mm-hmm. It's the double sided. Yeah. I love Tommy Knockers. What do you? What do you honestly think about Tommy Knockers? People crap I've on always, Tommy Knockers. I remember seeing that from an incredibly early age. Also, yeah, when it was first shown, and mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed it. Me and, too. Every time you talk about it, you talk about Tracy Lords. <laughs> well, yeah, because we all know who Tracy Lords is and right, where right. she came from. So, <laughs> right. I have, um, 
I liked um, what's his name, Jimmy Smith, and the actress yes. is, is his wife, Marge Helgenberger. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, she was. I, in agree, I, I always enjoyed that one. I yeah, Jimmy Smith that... carried the film. Yeah, huh? I said Jimmy Smith pretty much carried that film. He was yeah, really good. it's true. I like when he fell out the window. <laughs> he thinks it's a door. He's drunk and he's he's getting ready to leave, and he thinks it's a door, and he falls out the window. He goes, "Oh, oh!" And he... <laughs> it's the funniest Jesus. thing when he when he hits the ground. He hits his head, and he's like, "Oh!" Like, <laughs> but I think I that is with Stephen King. Sometimes uh, things like that that are not meant to be funny turn out to be funny. Like, yeah, uh, I, honestly, yeah, quite a, quite a bit, like quite a bit of that kind of thing happens in the stand, <laughs> the mini series. Yeah, see, I was just talking about that. The Friday the Thirteenth set is not out of print yet. The Scream Factory, and it, and the thing is, I thought that set was going to go real quick when they first announced it, and then when it came up to you know be ordered, I ordered mine, and I'm like, watch after a week. This thing is not even going to be available, but it it it, it never did that. Like it was always available. So but the it thing wasn't... is, I think um, the part that isn't sold anymore. I think it was the one that had the poster. That I don't oh. think that one isn't included anymore. That's the one that went well, incredibly quick. I think people had think a problem with those. Re- People had a problem with the replacement discs too. There, there's, there's some of them that needed replacement discs that you had to actually, they, they sent them to you. Mm. But I don't think they had that problem on the Halloween box set, did they? I don't even remember the original yeah, Halloween box set. That. And uh, when we were doing a stream last November, I had mentioned that I think the bigger uh, set has the theatrical and producers cut of the. Uh, it does, yes. Yes. See, I have the Tendis set, and I'm fine with it. It is still Scream Factory. They don't all have their in individual cases. That's fine. But I have the producer's cut of Halloween Curse of Michael Myers on Blu-ray, so it's fine. I have them all. So it's Yeah, all right. and I know I- you do not like Halloween and Halloween 2, the later ones. Rob Zombie. Oh, the Rob Zombie ones? Eh, <laughs> no, I don't You're really. Right. I really wish that it this recent time they were done, it should have stopped at 2018. Halloween Resurrections oh. on, on right now. <laughs> Halloween, Halloween Resurrections <laughs> playing on the TV right now as we speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. I think there was a problem with uh, one of the Halloween movies. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. You're right. I th- wasn't it um, Halloween 5 or was it? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It was what probably Halloween 5, was. yeah. But that set, again, I tried to get that set when it was uh, up for ordering online. I went to go do it and it, I was too late. They were sold out and like they never, I think they, I don't know if they ever got it back in to actually order again. But you could go on eBay. Obviously, everyone was charging outrageous prices for it. But well, Screen Factory can sometimes do that when you try to order directly from them. Well, that's what that I mean, though. Tr- like, like the Friday Thirteenth never that box set never disappeared to where you couldn't get it anymore unless you went on eBay. But it, mm-hmm. you could still order it. It's just yeah. I don't know why. Maybe just people weren't. Maybe people didn't want that as bad as the Halloween one, but uh, I was I was lucky enough to get the 15 disc set on the eBay in 2020. That's cool. I, I, I want that set so bad. God, I want that set. I just can't afford it right now. Yeah, it would take up a lot of show, uh, show space too. Well, my 10 disc one is signed by a uh, Tony Moran. So and that's, I, that's he, my he's profile. That's, Right. Yeah, that's my profile pic on my YouTube channel is me and Tony mm-hmm. Moran. And he uh I was so tall standing next to him, you know, 
knowing the fact that he actually put the Michael Myers mask on, like when he, when he, he was, you know, he's famous for unmasked Michael, but Mm -hmm. there was a moment when he tried to like put it on. I'm standing next to him. Like, dude, Michael Myers is short. (laughs) Like I tower (laughs) over Tony Moran. Like I look down, I can see the top of his head. It's just, he he looked up at me and he goes, you're one tall motherfucker. (laughs) That's what I said. Like, imagine you standing next to Tyler Mayne. Oh, God. I'd probably still have to look up at him. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> he, he's, he's, yeah, he's huge. But, uh, uh anyway. I'm glad that, I'm glad that Rob Zombie did not do, uh, the remake of The Blob. And then, uh, he was supposed to do a Halloween 3D. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, Rob Zombie does good in his own interpretation of like coming up with original type movies, like yeah, the Firefly stuff, the Firefly trilogy, um, Lords of Salem was excellent. Those kind of movies, I think he should stick to instead of trying to do a a, a franchise um, and making it his making it his own. I haven't seen the monster, so I can't. I can't comment. I haven't seen it yet. I didn't um, see that. Do you yeah. like the Resident Evil movies? I haven't um, seen any of them. The first, okay, quick story. The first, the first Resident Evil I saw in the theater. Me and my cousin Dan were huge fans of the game. Right, mm-hmm. we we played the first game on the PlayStation years ago. We played Resident Evil Two, played Resident Evil Three Nemesis, played all the Resident Evil games. When they announced they were doing a live action Resident Evil movie, Dan and I were the first ones to get tickets. We went and <clears throat> I don't know, during the movie, I, I kept being like kind of pissed off that they weren't showing any of the characters from the game because none of them were really in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? It? I'm like, oh, man, like, come on. But. I will say there are some really good moments in the original Resident Evil movie um, with the zombies and the way they are infected. And when they go down to the hive and do all that stuff, there are some really good moments. So I can't really say that I hate the movie. I think the hallway with the laser laser stuff is really cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll say the movie could have been better. I think the, the, the it had potential. And um, as far as the sequels go, uh, the second one, the second one is, I think, too campy. It's It has charm to it, though. The third one is Extinction, which I really like. I really like the third one. And a lot of people don't like that one, but I like and that it. That was in 2007, I believe. Right. So the, th- so the third movie. I believe they say it's like almost the weakest. I think there's a lot of people that say they, they really hate that one. It's mm. almost like Mad Max mixed with, uh, well, Resident Evil. Uh, you know, they're in the desert and all that stuff. They go to mm. Vegas and things like that. But that movie was actually really good. Um, then there's the other ones. There's Afterlife. There's Retribution. And then the final chapter, which I, th- I just think they're those are just all mindless action. I guess you could call them fun in ways, but... Yeah. Let me tell you this. The newest movie called uh, Operation Raccoon City. Is that what it's called? Raccoon it's called City. It. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. The, the newest was one. Made it, or was it live action? It was live action. Right. I, love the, I love the CGI movies. Um, okay. So the newest live action one, a lot of people complained about it being too close to the game to where you know, they had the same looking outfits and like this and that. I thought it was actually a pretty cool movie. The only thing wrong is the casting. I think they got the casting wrong on Leon Kennedy. I thought they did him dirty. I, I did. I did not like that actor. Um, I don't think it's as bad as people say. Uh, I need to watch it again, honestly. But I don't know. Overall, I, I don't think the Resident Evil series is a bad. I don't think it's a bad series. I just think. We need something different. I, I, in my mind, I can make if I if I was look if I had all the money in the world and I could create my own company to where I could, 
you know, get a good director and stuff like that and make my own movie, it would be a Resident Evil movie. And in my mind, I have it to where it's scary as hell. It'd be a survival horror movie. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be action. It'd be survival horror. In my mind, I have it uh, as a fan of Resident Evil. And I know a lot of other people, there's there's fan films, there's all this the fan, you know, writings and, and books and all that stuff. I just think they did they have potential. They just need to dive into that potential of make it a good Resident Evil horror film, not like an action film. Yeah. Uh that's what I want to see. So I don't know what anyone else wants to say. Uh hey Dale, what's up? And I thought that was what this Raccoon City one was um promoted to be scary. It, it's kind of like the games. Um it, and people complained kinda, about it being too close. They they complained about it being kind of like campy, like it's not you know, you know, like when a when a horror movie has a low budget, mm. the acting, you know, the 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 set pieces, all that stuff just looks generic. The CGI looks bad, you know, things like that. That's what they were kind of comparing it to. Mm -hmm. it, it I don't think it had a, a bigger budget than the original Resident Evil with Mila Jovich, but the original Resident Evil with Mila Jovich, I think, is I want to say this, it's better than I can't believe I'm saying it. It's better than the newest one, in my opinion. And that was my complaint. I was like, oh, how come they don't have any of the original characters? And here we have the newest movie with the original characters, but the way they did them. The way they wrote them in was ridiculous. So I don't know. I really don't know. It's it's such a it's such a twisted logic. I'm <laughs> I'm just like hitting myself. Like you want one thing and then you get try to you get it, but it's not the right thing. It's like ugh, right. I don't <laughs> there is know. a good horror movie fee on YouTube. The mean one uh, is that Grinch horror one. Oh, okay, oh. I remember. Yeah, the grit. I that's another one I have not seen. Wasn't it was so that I don't know if it was the same people that did that uh, Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh. Pooh, Blood and Honey. I, I don't know, but I saw Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I'm gonna do a review on it. Um I actually liked it. I thought it was good. Um I know a lot of people hate it, <laughs> but I think I think it's interesting they're taking these uh like Disney or family characters uh and turning them into you know horror characters in a way yeah like think, now but, but recently um krampus not really santa claus but krampus and then mm -hmm. there's um violent night with uh, david oh yeah Dirk. with uh david yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. yeah it's not really uh scary one but it was that was another twist because <laughs> he was a uh, drunk <laughs> right early on hey uh so dale's in here uh i was gonna ask him dale what was your very first horror film that you ever saw and how oh, did this is dale stark Let's talk about movies and stuff as Dale. Yes. Oh, okay. He changed his uh his name. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. The mean one is also on Blu-ray, yeah. yeah. Oh, it did get a Blu-ray release. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um so I was trying to think of there's that movie called Thanksgiving coming oh, out yes. next month. I uh, actually, I mean, look, it's our October's almost ready, uh, over already. Mm -hmm. Probably have to say check your nightmare and Elm Street. Um, okay, yes. So, one of the child's plays or yeah, yeah. a nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, that's a it's a, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being small, you know, like younger, watching Child's Play for the first time. 
that involves a kid with a Chucky doll. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, most parents probably would not allow a child to see that because well, of what it is and then what re- it has to deal with. Do you remember those My Buddies? Yes. You remember those never, dolls? I don't think I ever had one, but I remember that. I had one, and I took them everywhere. Because in the commercial, it's like you can take them anywhere, you know. I took them to hotels. I took them everywhere. And just like a uh, a Chucky doll, like he had, you know, shoes you could put on, the overalls, uh, the hair felt real. And, yeah, that's. <laughs> and the, the, head never, turned, the head never turned all the way around, though, right? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> it, 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 it didn't it didn't turn when i looked at him but he may have i don't know but see i never watched child's play that young so i never no. i never looked at my buddy as a uh killer doll thank god yeah right. but it's just so it's just so weird though when i think about it like the way right. the concept the concept of the chucky doll versus like the my buddy doll you know <laughs> it's almost like the same thing Right. <laughs> but. So, Chucky, Nightmare on Elm Street. The one, the Nightmare on Elm Street that may have uh, frightened me the most was maybe three. Three frightened you the most? I, that probably was, yeah. Because that dealt with more. That seemed like it dealt with more with uh, the. The dream, uh, it did, uh, yeah. World more than the, the previous two, mm-hmm. and uh, yes. just something that always uh, st- uh, unnerved me. <laughs> yes, very. Yeah, three definitely deals with the dreams. For me, I want to say the second movie really kind of bothered me uh, with the whole bus school bus thing in the beginning. When Freddy's driving all crazy, you know, with the, in the school bus, and uh, I don't know, it just brought me back to like, it just brought me back to like the days when you would go on the school bus to go to school. It's like, well, is Freddy driving today? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's there's stuff about the second movie that's kind of dark. Uh, yeah, like when you enter the bus, you didn't see, you wouldn't see Freddy, but then at some point, it may change to Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, I never had nightmares about Freddy. I never did. It was more about Michael than anything. Mm-hmm. Like I said, there's, no. something, there's something weird. Like, look, if I looked out this window, right, and I saw a guy just standing there looking at me in a mask or something, that's, to me, that's scarier than some guy invading your dreams, you know? Yeah, if, that, I don't know. he doesn't say much of anything. Right. And he moves incredibly slow even slower than uh jason Voorhees. i agree with uh i agree with you physical media about yeah i i think the third one is um i think it's better than the first uh but i'm a huge supporter of the second movie yeah uh i love the second movie and you know people talk about the uh the gay innuendos and and all that stuff about the second movie but that's not really to me a big deal um i think freddie does a lot of cool things like he kills all, a lot of those kids at the pool and um i don't know i just i i think freddie's kind of darker in the second in the that second tongue, film. That tongue thing, thing yeah where he early. yeah he's making out with kim myers and then and then uh his tongue comes out <laughs> so great when it does when it does when his tongue comes out i start laughing because it is kind of funny but uh, <laughs> oh man! And then it does one where I think since he was, I guess, done away with in the first film, he's using a physical body to try and get back into the real world. In two, he yes, mm-hmm. he's basically trying to get Jesse to kill for him and then he's going to basically it's like he's going to take over the body because that's Mm -hmm. what he says he's like you got the body i got the brain so basically freddie's using him as like a puppet in a way um 
It so. really seemed like even uh, what they were when Freddy was trying to do that, he still somehow got killed off anyway at the end of two. So it was almost pointless. <laughs> Pretty much. Because then he came back anyway in three and the stupid way he was brought back in four. Right. In three, what was it? Oh, he he wasn't using anyone to get into the real world, but he was invading the, those uh, young young people's minds in the that mental hospital yeah and uh, i think that was what made why he was trying to get back into the world right well um i think i'm gonna end it here um yeah. we've already been about an hour 10 so um again we've gone over our topic which is your very first horror film that you ever watched and um i want to thank all of you guys for coming in the chat and uh talking to us and letting us know your first horror film that you ever watched so i think it's really interesting to hear because you know everyone's going to have different different ones depending on when you were born and uh all that stuff so um like i said this is going to be a weekend uh stream where every weekend we're going to talk about something different and um uh also i said this too that anybody who wants to come on to the stream and i'm not talking about the chat i'm talking about actually come on the panel um can do so we'll start that next weekend if you feel like you want to come up you know come on the uh, panel you know let me know and uh yeah it should be pretty fun so i'll let you guys know the topic for next weekend um and we'll go from there so anything else you want to say kenny i, I think we i said all that i wanted to say like you i can't think yeah. of anything else you, have, you got flies at your house too no it was just, that was just i saw I you go know. like this i'm like i don't know <laughs> what it was but it was, is the amityville it was, horror happening at your house right now no you okay, you had good. one flying around you the whole time. That was yeah. the first time I saw one. Well, I'm not a preacher on the toilet, so I'm all right. Okay, well, uh, I want again. I want to thank everyone for coming in. You know, Dale, uh, physical media collector. Um, also Matthias. had uh, Matthias Juarez. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, stay tuned for this coming weekend. And uh, all this right, is, this is Rob's horror hangout. And we will see you guys next time. I did the Obi One thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> right.